your team has uh, a lot of experience in the gaming industry. So maybe some of the artists you're collaborating with uh, are probably uh, well versed in creating digital art. Are you finding that the, the artists you collaborate with are mostly from the vast experience that your team has in the gaming industry? Or are you seeing new artists who are exploring digital art for the first time because of NFTs? Could you just share a little bit about the types of artists you collaborate with? Yeah, I think that's a really good good question, Dylan. Uh, from our side, I think that we predominantly for our NFTs, you know, we work with artists as well as designers, and a lot of them are, you know, game designers uh, that are creating the NFTs for us to be able to use within the games themselves. So I think on most of the things that we're working on at the moment, the artistic element, I would say often come secondary to you know the actual game design aspect of it itself uh but the artists that we've been working with to be honest with you uh a lot of them for the game side of things just come from a, a gaming uh, as well as you know art design background and we you know the way that we position ourselves is kind of you know helping uh basically bridge traditional games traditional uh designers and artists to the blockchain so we're actually you know doing the blockchain side of things and, and guiding them through it. Um, whereas they have extensive, uh, you know, experience and knowledge on the, you know, design and, and art, digital art, especially uh, side of things. Um, the game you're talking about is going to have a metaverse. So like we could be talking about land or parcels that represent an NFT or characters or items. So what are the use cases for NFTs that you're saying, seeing as you build out uh, the UFO token and the game that your team is working on? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dylan. NFTs play you know, a key role within our games, as well as our ecosystem, as well as the metaverse. I think one of the most exciting things about it that you know, as, a, as a gamer myself as well, Michael, you know, it's really interesting to, to kind of hear your take on things. Um, you know, a lot of the same kind of thoughts, to be honest, go through, you know, went through my mind. I went through a, a very similar process to yourself. Um, I think the fact that you can, you know, level up certain weapons or armor, you know, you're like just grinding, trying to level up your, you know, fire sword up to level 99. And then when you finish, finish playing the game, it just stays in that game. You know, if you don't pick it up again, the fact that you can take that weapon now, if it's an NFT, you can potentially, and this is something that we, we really do want to look at building in future, you know, potentially being able to like take your level 99 fire sword that you've leveled up, uh, being able to take it into different games, you know, being able to use it in different games, being able to showcase it within your metaverse. You know, let's say you guys were, you know, coming over to, to, to my land plot or my, my house in the metaverse and the you know, UFO one or, or, or any other metaverse, for example, you know, being able to showcase my level 99 fire sword for you guys, um, you know, would be super exciting, I think, to, to any gamer, really. Um, so that element of it is very, very important. And, and the land ownership aspect is, is another very interesting point. The fact that you can, you know, own that land, you can customize it within the metaverse. Uh, one really interesting thing that we're, we're building at the moment is, you know, income generating NFTs as well. Uh, which I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with, you know, what we want to do is have anyone that owns land within our metaverse basically get a, you know, proportion share of the income that's generated in the ecosystem itself. So just by owning and holding the land in your wallet, you're going to be able to basically generate income through that NFT uh, and, and be a part of that ecosystem. And I think that this plays a, a, a really important role, especially because, you know, we're really moving towards and striving for a kind of, you know, DAO, um, you know, operating system. Um, so in that sense, I think it makes a lot of sense and giving people voting rights as well, based on them holding, um, you know, a certain NFT, owning a bit of land, being able to vote on, you know, what game, let's say UFO gaming release next, for example, right? Or what decision, specific company uh, makes because you hold a certain NFT. So there's, there's really endless use cases for NFTs. And, you know, it has our whole team very, very excited. And we're really quite open-minded to different ideas as well. 
you know, our primary token UFO, you know, we launched on, you know, Ethereum and uh, obviously the gas fees are just crazy there for us to be able to, to build a game. So uh, our first game, we are going to be releasing on Polygon, uh, but the, because of those lower fees, for example. Uh, but key things that, that play a part, apart from obviously lower fees, you know, efficiency um, are things like, you know, what companies are, you know, within, uh, within that space, you know, on that, uh, on that chain itself. Um, that we could potentially collaborate with and, and, and work with. I think one interesting point that, that you guys were, you know, Dylan and Michael, you guys were talking about earlier is, you know, for example, Neo really starting, you know, to, to almost like pioneer the, the, the movement for like renting NFTs, for example, which is, um, you know, really interesting element for us because you will need an NFT to play our game, Super Galactic, for example. You'll need to actually purchase an NFT to be able to do that. Therefore, if you can just rather than if you can't afford to purchase one, if you can just rent it, and the fact that Neo is 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 so um, you know for this this ability to you know rent uh, NFTs out, um, I think that that's super exciting. But yeah, partnerships within um, you know what other companies are, are on that chain is obviously a, a really crucial uh, element as well for us. You're working on a game, Super Galactic, that is creating this world that people are going to interact in. So what are some of the considerations that you have to take into mind when you're building out this world and what the kind of various different outliers for what the metaverse actually represents are? I think for us, we did a lot of planning initially before you know getting going with the build out of the metaverse. And I think what we wanted to do was ensure that we make it as accessible as possible. Uh, we didn't want like high barriers to entry. We didn't want it to be complicated. We wanted everyone on any device to be able to, you know, jump in uh, and, and get in in a very accessible manner. So, you know, what we try to do is, you know, not have to have an area that you have to necessarily uh, do a whole sign up, give a lot of information. You could just jump in and, and get started immediately. Uh, but we also wanted to to make it, you know, as as interesting and exciting for for the users as possible. Uh, obviously, as as a gaming platform, we wanted to integrate games into the into the metaverse, you know, as much as we can. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, the it's it's for us because we're a community owned project. Uh, we really kept that at the heart of the metaverse. So it for us, it was it was all about, uh, you know, realizing how. Our, our community members and just individuals and their friends go into experience certain things rather than trying to map it out from like an individual's perspective. We realized that it'd be like groups of friends or, or um, you know, members of the community going in together. Interestingly enough, we have, I think, around 80% of our uh, weekly team calls uh, in our metaverse at the moment. Um, which, which works out really well. Um, we, I think we're enjoying it a little bit too much. Um, to be honest, it's easy to get distracted. Uh, but I think just creating this world where you can jump in with your friends, you can watch videos together, watch Twitch streams, play games together, talk about whatever you want to talk about, Game of Thrones, <laughs> and uh, you know, be able to showcase your, your NFTs to your friends. You know, um, what are the sort of missing pieces to get to this point where everybody can be using NFTs in, in gaming and, and uh uh, the metaverse? Um, I think, to be honest, a, a really good starting point would be just for a lot of people in the, the gaming industry and some of the larger players to, I think, just start being a little bit more open-minded to the idea of, you know, NFTs and play to earn within gaming. Because I genuinely feel, and I think a lot of people do feel that, you know, it is the future. And the sooner that the larger companies start to adapt to that and start you know, developing their technology and games uh, to, to, to tailor to that, the, the, the better. Um, but aside from, from that aspect, because, you know, we're seeing a lot of, you know, pushback. We're obviously trying to, you know, bridge traditional games onto the blockchain. We're trying to partner with, you know, large gaming studios, AAA gaming studios and say to them, look, you know, you, we can basically help you create a play to earn model, make your games a lot more exciting, a lot more interesting, take them to a whole new level. And I think a lot of people in gaming are, you know, uh, quite old fashioned because the gaming industry has been in a very similar um, mindset uh, for, for, for quite some time, while there has been some huge drastic um, you know, changes. I think just on a more general sense to answer your question, I think a more 
you know, flawless UI UX experience uh, for the for the users uh, as well as multi-chain. I think what would really help is you know being able to you know have that technology in place where the players themselves don't even realize they're using the blockchain. You know, it should just be as easy and accessible as creating your uh, you know Google account, sending an email. Uh, or, or anything like that, because at the moment, you know, one of the things that we're finding, um, you know, that, that that just keeps coming up is, you know, the the catch with the current state of blockchain is that, you know, each chain is is quite isolated, and you know, because we're trying to build a multi-chain metaverse, you know, this is quite a challenging thing. So I feel as though, you know, blockchain needs to evolve uh, to a state of being able to function, um, you know, in separate chains. Um, being able to function one another in one, you know, large connected ecosystem. And, you know, individuals with little to no knowledge, you know, may be able to better understand Web 3.0 using this way as well. And I think the ultimate goal should be to create something that's you know, financially viable um, as well, um, you know, as, as multi-chain, but also a better sort of UI UX experience so that users really just have the most simple experience. Now, uh, Ace, you can let me know if this is putting you on the spot or not, but uh, as as um, Super Galactic will be building on top of the NEO network, does that mean that uh, community members can potentially expect a NEP17 version of the UFO token at some point in the near future? Oh, I think you have definitely put me on the spot there. Um, <laughs> I think we're, you know, we're in the, you know, discussion phase, I think with you guys, you know, we're, we're sort of brainstorming in, in different ways of collaboration. And I think we are going to be putting out an announcement very, very soon. I think in the next, in the next week or two, um, you know, going, delving a little bit deeper about the collaborations between, between Neo and UFO. So I think that I will save the reveal of that information for the article uh, before our before my team sends me a, abusive messages for sharing too much on here, they've already they've already been messaging me about talking about the metaverse and, and uh, having our meetings in the metaverse. So just just careful about what else I'm revealing on here. I think absolutely. Um, can you, uh, without you know, enraging your team, are there any uh, like high level next steps on the roadmap for your project? Um, do you mean uh, in terms of, you know, uh, on our project, the NEO or just our project in general, um, you know, what we're working on? Yeah, in general, because this is this is the first time a lot of the NEO ecosystem is learning about Super Galactic. So and it seems like you have a very uh, strong community uh, and a lot of people who are engaged. So maybe you could just share a little bit about the next steps um, that your community is already very well aware of that maybe the NEO community is not. Absolutely. Yeah, I would be happy to. I think, you know, everyone is kind of anticipating the launch of our staking DAP, uh, which is which is going to be imminent. And this staking DAP is going to allow people to basically stake their UFO tokens and earn you know, more UFO tokens as a, as a, as a yield, uh, in addition to plasma points, which they'll be able to use to, to play the games themselves. So I think a lot of people are waiting for that. Uh, after this, of course, the game Super Galactic is going to be launched very, very soon. Uh, we're going to give people a, a kind of you know playable demo, um, you know, and go into the beta phase with that. So they'll be able to you know jump in to the single player. They'll be able to play with their friends, um, and, and hopefully we'll get some some good feedback on the beta uh, for Super Galactic itself. Obviously the metaverse itself. You know you'll be able to jump in uh, hopefully quite soon with your friends into the metaverse, experience that. Um, you know whether it's with a VR headset or, or you know PC or Mac or, or mobile. Honestly, it doesn't work so well on mobile. I'll have to be honest with you guys. Uh, but um, you know, we want to make the you know metaverse experience as as um, you know exciting and as as immersive as possible. Uh, obviously, the NFT marketplace is something that we're we're building as well. Um, it's going to be released you know soon, which is where you'll be basically you know able to trade uh, your UFO gaming NFTs and things like that. Uh, but I think you know the the other thing that we're also excited about is developing more games on more chains and um yeah potentially there might be a hint uh as to uh as to what i'm doing on uh, on, on the neo uh <laughs> neo panel at the moment 